we've been hearing a lot about cryptocurrencies lately. Bitcoin's been in the headlines for making millions overnight and for being volatile enough to give investors a headache. So what role then do traditional assets like gold and other precious metals have to play in the economy of the future? Well, with me to discuss these issues are Josh Crum and Roy Seabag from Gold Money. I'm Julie McDonald. Welcome to The Business Debate. So with me to discuss these issues are Josh Crum and Roy Sibag from Gold Money. They are the founders. Roy, Josh, fantastic to have you here in the studio in London. It's great to see you. Let's talk about Gold Money and what it's able to offer the marketplace that others are not. So think of Gold Money like an online bank account, except instead of being denominated in dollars or yen or British pounds, it's actually backed by physical, redeemable gold gold, silver, platinum, palladium that sits in vaults all around the world that we control, fully insured, uh, and the account itself can be used just like a PayPal account. You can make payments, you can make transfers, we even give you a MasterCard that you can use to spend the gold or to withdraw currency from any ATM. But the, the benefits here are that you're using gold in a safe and secure way, you're accessing it in a very cheap way, it's only half a percent to buy, half a percent to sell, and if anything goes wrong with the financial system, you're safe. What's interesting about you guys, though, is the tie between, in a sense, old money, gold, and this new technology. How, how did that come about? Well, I think if you study the genealogy of Bitcoin, what you'll find is that the creator, whoever it is, it's a pseudonym, pseudonym named Satoshi Nakamoto, but if you read the text, this was an individual that clearly understood gold as an element, the history of gold and how it ascended as commodity money. But the most interesting thing that I think he brought to the table was he understood gold mining. He understood the amount of work that goes into mining gold. He understood that a commodity money has to have something known as a proof of work expended. And he really built, the, you know, the original paper that many people trace to the original white paper for Bitcoin is actually a paper by a fellow named Nick Zabo that's entitled Bit Space Gold. And many people that are sort of the early adopters have always viewed Bitcoin as a digital version of gold. So I think that the um, idea of, of Bitcoin married with gold is an idea that has been part of the creation of Bitcoin from the start. Uh, it is interesting that we are the only service in the world that truly marries the two as a functional uh, use case. You can have digital currency, you can have physical gold, and you're still able to use both currencies in the financial system. So Bitcoin in particular has been in the headlines um, very intensively uh, this past year or so. And it used to be, you know, kind of pleasant dinner party conversation. But now the market's really paying attention and your platform allows people to hold cryptocurrencies and to do it safely. How, how does that work? Yeah, so we've been involved with the cryptocurrency space uh, really for many years. Uh, we initially allowed people to actually convert cryptocurrencies into precious metals on our platform. We even have two published patents in that regard. Uh, more recently, after spending a lot of time investigating how we could provide a real safe solution to people, because when we looked at the landscape, we saw a lot of companies kind of rushing into this space, but not abiding by the basic best practices and financial services that we both had learned about as being fiduciaries. So something like financial audits, insurance, these are things that we expect from our banks. These are things that people expect from us at Gold Money. We spent a lot of time being thoughtful about how to build a solution for Bitcoin that would give people this turnkey service to just hold Bitcoin. It's already cold stored, it's insured, and it's also audited. And you can check our financial statements. We're a publicly traded company. And as far as I know, we're the only company really offering this service in the world today. There was a lot of talk, wasn't there, after the financial crash in 2008, which I can't believe is a decade ago, about safe innovation. What is the path that the markets need to, to be beating in the future? Yeah, I think it's a, it's a market of, of choice and, and really understanding, uh, you know, the, you know, who holds the assets, you know, wh where, where they're owned. And I, I think even we're starting to forget that already. You said, you know, 10, 10 years. Um, and people are taking more risks again. We're seeing a lot of the repeats of what was happening in 06, 07. I mean, sure, it's great that the stock market's going up. You know, people are feeling better about the economy and financial assets. Um, but we haven't solved a lot of those underlying risks of, of counterparty risk. And, and so we need, we need platforms that really focus on, on lowering risk uh, for, for assets. You've both been in the marketplace for a really long time. What are you paying attention to? right now what what's exciting 
Well, I think the ongoing development in currency and is, is really the most important thing that's happening in the markets. I mean, you know, we're, we're watching, you know, uh, technology stocks uh, take off. You know, most assets were up last year from emerging markets. Um, but the most important thing is the, what you're measuring those by. And, and when you're, you're seeing this, this continued uh, currency uncertainty matched with you know, like the rise of Bitcoin, there's definitely something going on in, in currency markets. And I think that's still the most important thing for people to be focused on. For you, what's exciting right now, Roy? I echo what Josh is saying. I think that in the future, when people look back at the present, the, the most important uh, event has been that people's concept of money is being changed. And th the idea of a commodity money is returning back. People are realizing that you don't just have to use a government money. You can use other forms of money. And it's part of that as well, Josh, re-educating people in a different way getting through a different message, because I think for so long we've lived in, in this In the world. old way. It's really, it's really reviving the ancient wisdom that has been prevalent uh, as, as the primary form of cooperation between men. I mean, we, we, we are not geniuses here. We're just actually reading books that were published more than 50 years ago. <laughs> and, and if you do that, and if you, if you actually peek behind this curtain, you find that there's a, a, a very well articulated body of work, scholarly work. You know, John Exter, who was head of the F uh, Federal Reserve in the United States, uh, was a Harvard scholar that came up with a concept known as uh, Exter's Pyramid, where he basically, um, you know, drew a pyramid, an inverted pyramid, where at the bottom of that pyramid sat, you know, the, the, the point of the pyramid was, was gold. And, and then on top of that, he had the base money and the cash and the treasury bills and the stocks. I mean, this was conventional wisdom. It's, it's only today that you find um, that this information has literally been expunged from academia. And, and so I guess from, from our perspective, we look at the market, we see what gold's doing. It doesn't matter what currency you measure it on. It's the laws of physics that enforce gold's performance, not any economist. And we say, look, hopefully we'll be able to get people to change the way they think about this. But if they don't, at least we're providing sort of this tent for the people that do understand it. Josh, a final word for you on the direction we should be heading in. Sure. Yeah, I, what, what's, what's interesting about, um, about what Roy was saying is the wisdom has been lost in sort of uh, academia. There, there's this sort of dogma about, about money in, in uh, central banking and, and you know, mainstream uh, economics. But despite all of that, what we say, what we call dogma, there's a market price. And the market price and the reasons why gold outperformed never changed. <laughs> so the market is saying one thing and everyone talking about the market is saying something different. So we'd rather listen to the market than what everyone is agreeing about, you know, in, in some, you know, some academic, you know, bubble. And, and so, you know, th that's another big part of our, our business is that we're, we're actually not, you know, there's a lot of people that, that understand gold, um, but we're, we're really looking at it like, you know, we should be afraid of, of you know, all of this, the centralization. We should buy gold because... Um, you know, the, the financial system's going to crash again. And that's not the only reason, you know, that, that's not the reason to buy gold. You know, we invest in technology. We invest in technology companies. You shouldn't be comparing buying gold to buying Google. Um, you, you should be comparing gold to, to other forms of money. Um, and if you, if you just, if you narrow and, and look at that band, the market shows that gold always wins. Uh, this is not, you know, some theory. This is just what the market is telling you. And so that's what we, you know, our technology is one part of it. But also uh, what we're trying to, to sort of revive is this, this you know, really basic, uh, basic wisdom of, of just you know, look at the market and ask why um, and, and not focus so much on all these different theories. And, and if you look at, at money as, as a technology, it's actually always changing. You know, our, our monetary system is very different than it was 10 years ago, which is very different than 30 years ago. Uh, and so, so it's not like just because we measure in a US dollar or a British pound, we put it in the denominator, doesn't mean it's always the same. Uh, that, that was the trick. Uh, it, you know, people think that that number is always the same, but it's not. It's constantly changing. Uh, and if you compare it to gold, uh, gold always wins. Roy, Josh, it's been fascinating to host you and to find out about what you're doing. Thank you so much. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Join us again on The Business Debate when we'll be talking about smart cities. I'm Julian McDonald. Thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.